Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a special episode. I'm going to do two theropod dinosaurs today, so which is kind of pretty cool. So the first one we're actually going to talk about is Mononychus. Mononychus in Greek or Latin means one claw. Its length is about 3.3 feet. Its height can be around 2 feet or less. Weighed less than 100 pounds. Its time was in the Cretaceous period, late Cretaceous period, 81 to 68 million years ago, and found in Mongolia. And the reason why it was called single claw is because it actually has uh, arms that just have one finger. And so, so here is a picture. Here's an artist rendition of Mononychus. As you can see, here's the those are the one claw. That's why that's why it was actually named that way. It was because of those single digit uh, arms and so what Mononychus really is is a theropod dinosaur that probably was covered in feathers uh, because I've seen a lot of artist renditions actually saying that it probably does have feathers and so what this animal probably was actually doing is that it had high speed so it was probably catching things that were pretty fast it had very tiny little teeth and so it was a carnivore but uh, most of its diet was probably going to be insects small reptiles and even mammals and so that's probably what it's actually going to be feeding on. And when you're actually that small, you're going to have to go after things that are going to be a tad bit, a tad bit fast. And so that's why it actually had to had to had those really long legs to actually to catch fast moving prey. It's not going to tackle any dinosaurs because first of all, if you're going to have a skull that is very small, very narrow, and you're very small, and you're very narrow, and you're actually built for speed. Uh, and you have tiny teeth that are not really well equipped to actually um, to, like uh, slice off huge chunks of flesh from big prey, you're more likely to go after small prey. And so that's probably was actually that was probably more what it was doing is catching insects, uh, reptiles, and some small mammals. And so it lived in a time where like Velociraptor was actually um, not quite a competitor towards. Uh, Mononychus, but it was actually competing for small prey like uh, reptiles and some small mammals. But probably its main competition was the oviraptors. The oviraptors uh, were probably its main competition, even though oviraptors were a tad bit more uh, omnivorous, were were more omnivorous than anything else. But but with oviraptors, they can actually eat insects. They can eat small reptiles, some small mammals, because that's what uh, oviraptors are probably going to be catching anyway. And so. So that's why I think uh, Mononychus would actually be having that kind of competition. But I think Oviraptors stayed a little bit towards the plains, whereas the whereas Mononychus would actually be living in the forested areas where it actually has some protection and also it actually has all the food it can have, all the food it can ask for. So like your scorpions, your spiders, your flies, your dragonflies, and all those sorts of stuff, and even small lizards and uh, some uh, mammals that were actually uh, roaming, rummaging around uh, during dusk and at, sun, and at uh, sun, sunrise. And so, and also ex extinction was pretty much just that that couldn't adapt to the changes in the environment, and so it actually probably just couldn't change, just could not adapt to like the different kinds of predators that were coming in, and also dinosaurs were actually starting to be a little bit more in decline uh, at that particular time. Uh, near the end of the age of dinosaurs, but uh, Mononychus just could not survive in those those particular kinds of changes. And then the second theropod I'm going to be talking about is Termolengia. Termolengia. Uh, I can't remember what the meaning of it is, but uh, its length is 10 to 12 feet. Its height is unknown. Uh, weight would be 375 to 600 pounds. And its time was in the late Cretaceous period, around 94 to 90 million years ago, and was found in Uzbekistan. And so you would actually think of a country that you've never heard of before would actually have dinosaurs or any kinds of fossils. But uh, or in the middle of that country, in the, in, right in that particular part of Asia, uh, yeah, there have been fossils found there. It's just that it's just very unknown there uh, for fossil hunting. It's just because the scientists, the scientists have not gone out there very much. Uh, to find fossils just because they're just looking for the countries that they're familiar with uh, to find fossils and so and uh, show you an artist rendition of Termolengia and so here is Termolengia sorry it's a little bright here here we go so here's Termolengia this is from the, the uh, very uh, famous uh, uh, documentation uh, by Scientific American they actually have 
this artist's rendition in their article about Termolingia. And so Termolingia probably had feathers, and it was part of the Tyrannosaur family. And so it was in between uh, the big Tyrannosaurs and actually the small Tyrannosaurs. And so it's actually like kind of like in that medium-sized range. And so it is actually a... It's a very well-equipped predator, so it's got the typical traits of a Tyrannosaur, like uh, big teeth, uh, big skull, uh, powerful jaws, um, <clears throat> small arms, uh, long, long back legs, and a good and a good strong tail. And so that has the typical traits of a Tyrannosaur. And the teeth are D-shaped in cross section, so that's typical of Tyrannosaurs. And uh, has good eyesight, good sense of smell, good sense of hearing. So it has all the traits for that for a, of a Tyrannosaur. Probably was very much faster than the big Tyrannosaurus, so it was actually going after uh, fast-moving prey. And uh, the thing about Termolingia is that when it was found, they actually CAT scanned the brain case because it was found with a complete brain case. And so this complete brain case was CAT scanned, and they actually found out that this brain was actually bigger than its overall body size. And so that actually kind of shows that this animal was kind of an, was actually really intelligent. And so that actually shows Tyrannosaurus actually started off as an intel as intelligent uh, dinosaurs. They started out small. And then as time went on, they got larger and larger and larger. And so their brains are actually still going to be a major part as they actually uh, continue on to get larger. And so Tumerlangia was actually that example, is that it, it still is going to have a big brain for to actually able to actually, you know, outsmart its prey. So probably its prey is going to be um, small to medium-sized prey, so it's probably going after small ceratopsians, probably some... Uh, smaller versions of ornithomimids and uh, you actually have probably some armored dinosaurs it was probably going after it probably didn't have the, did not have strong jaw did not have the strong bite force like say of the bigger tyrannosaurs but it would actually have a strong enough bite to actually be able to uh, pretty much actually cause a devastating blow uh, to a lot of its prey and so it probably had probably actually try to ambush its prey because most tyrannosaurs are actually going to be ambush predators. The big tra big tyrannosaurs are more likely to be ambush predators, but they would still have good enough endurance to actually be able to catch its prey. So you'll be able to tire its prey out in order to actually get to its prey, but it's not actually going to catch its prey very often. So that's what that's why predators are very unsuccessful uh, most of the time when they're actually trying to hunt. And so it was both. It was pretty much an opportunistic predator, so it would actually have the ability to hunt and scavenge, like all predators do today. And in, in its extinction, of course, is that it could not adapt to the changes in environment. So pretty much, even though having a big, big brain is actually kind of an advantage, it still is going to be a disadvantage when you're actually going to be trying to compete over body size. Body size would actually determine. Uh, whether or not you're actually going to succeed uh, down in the future. And so that's why Tyrannosaurs, they got larger and larger. It's because their prey was getting bigger and bigger. And so that's why it actually had to, that's why Tyrannosaurs actually had to adapt to the changes of the prey that that was that the prey was actually causing it. So like uh, the Ceratopsians, they were actually getting better defenses with the frills and the horns. And, uh, and then uh Armored dinosaurs that were getting much better in terms of armor, like instead of spikes, they're actually getting scoots. Uh, and also the developing clubs in their tails, whereas the hadrosaurs, they didn't have to change very much. It's just that mainly it's just about uh, defense is mainly by the herd. And so that's how it goes. And probably Termolangia probably did hunt in packs, and so you actually got Termolangia as probably the the go-to Tyrannosaur to actually find out that Tyrannosaurs were probably... Uh, pretty good at intelligent dinosaurs. Probably, probably not in terms of intelligence towards us, but you see, animal intelligence is different from human intelligence. That's what I want you guys to actually take out of, is that animal intelligence is very different from human intelligence. All right, that's it for now. Now, next week, we'll be, ans we'll be an answering questions episode, so if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com, or just go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions on the wall or on the comments section, but remember, keep your questions short and to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at CSJLL. That's my Twitter page. I'll post pretty cool stuff on there, and also take care of people around you, and also for your young younger people out there, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you could have for good education. It's very important to have good education with a good education. Good, good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.